when I dated Dan Bilzerian, he had a huge male following. So I got all of his male followers, which are very much um, people who are into guns and girls, which I don't. You know, I told that's fine. But no, I have a lot of guy followers, but, you know, I've kind of leaned into that. I think a lot of brands get picky when a girl has a ton of guy followers and they kind of leverage that to say, you know, oh, we don't want to work with you because your following is all male. But I just kind of own it and lean into it. And I enjoy having a super male following. It's kind of fun. Sure. I'm glad yeah. you brought up Dan because I've always wondered, is his life as crazy <laughs> and over the top as he portrays on Instagram, because that's his thing to have this crazy over top. But I can't tell. It's like, are all the girls actually hanging out in the bathtub with you? Or were you like, okay, everyone in the picture, let's take a shot. And then like everyone disbands. Um, absolutely. It's all real, which is really? crazy. A hundred percent. And so is, uh, it, is it hard to date someone like that though? It was, but I, tw I was 23 when we met and this was the first, one of the first people I met in LA period. So um, with Dan came a ton of adventure. I met some of my now lifelong friends through Dan and Dan made it a purpose to make me internet famous. So hanging out with Dan came with a lot of perks, but it was a hundred percent real. His lifestyle was real. It was so um, interesting to me that the first time we met, I actually came home and I wrote the entire story down. Like, you know, I have 10 pages of when I met Dan Bilzerian because it was the wildest night and just situation and but no that's a hundred percent his life which is fascinating okay take us through the wild night i want to <laughs> <Yeah>. hear <laughs> well basically um i got invited to the playboy mansion for a halloween party and i moved here i'd maybe been here like 10 days i didn't even have a sofa yet and i was like you, you know i gotta go why like i gotta go someone's sure. gonna get me in there i gotta go and so i bought a pitchfork and devil horns and i wore underwear and I met up with these strangers at the Roosevelt and they took me to the Playboy Mansion. And um, immediately a security guard came up to me and he's like, hey, do you want to meet Dan Bilzerian? And I was like, oh, yeah, like I know who this guy was. And um, so they brought me over there and he literally was just his first words were actually, I like the way you jiggle. And then <laughs> I, that pickup line actually works. I like the way you jiggle. It was the first. It was what it was the first thing he said. And then I responded with, "This is what the real thing looks like." Like just <laughs> so cheesy. But um, we hung out all night. I remember um, when we went back to his place. He had. It was the first time I'd ever been in. Like I think it was a Rolls Royce, and there was like a zebra rug on the floor, like something outrageous. And I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And when we got back to the house. There, I remember specifically the kitchen was filled with like fruit and snacks and trays. And it was the first time I'd ever seen like a cornucopia of food. Like I'd been to Thanksgiving dinner, but I'd never seen such a display on a random Halloween night at someone's home. It was shocking. It was just, but he, the whole thing was real. He is the real deal. Was there other women there? There from that night, I don't remember there being another woman there, but there was a bra there. Like okay. there was a bra hanging on his door handle that I remembered specifically. So when but you were dating sure him, there were other women there, to be honest with you. Looking back, absolutely there were. So when you were dating him, was it exclusive? Was he seeing other people? Was it sort of like menage or what was going on? It was a little open. No, it was definitely open. Dan did whatever he wanted. And he was the good thing about Dan is he's a really honest guy. So he doesn't expect monogamy from you if he's not going to give it to you. So he was always like, you know, keep your options open, do whatever you want. And it worked out. I think a lot of a lot of guys think that, you know, cheating is the way, but not at all. Like if you're honest, that's why he has so many women that like him and kind of speak nicely about him because he wasn't deceiving or manipulative and he wasn't selfish. So, no, he had a ton of um, extracurricular activities. And honestly, at 23, I wasn't looking for anything serious either. So it was just it worked. Were you attracted to him or was it the lifestyle? You know, because I, I could see someone – I've met him. And when I met him, I met him once, and uh, he wasn't a big guy. Like, he's strong. He's in shape, but he's not a tall kind of good guy. He's got that beard. Like, it's just like, oh, it's sort of – you know, he's a celebrity. You know, I was just – I didn't know what well, I was going to expect. But are you, were you attracted to him or, or were you attracted to the lifestyle? Um, I guess based on my own dating history – I mean, that's kind of hard to say because he is his lifestyle. That is who Dan is. So he, he would be a completely different guy if that wasn't his story. But I can tell you I have dated uh, 
completely broke people since and before. And I've also <laughs> dated men shorter and much taller after. I'm actually notorious for not having a type. When my friends tell me I don't have a type. But what I do like is a leader and someone who's kind of the center of their friend group. And Dan certainly fits that bill. So I don't know. It, I, I, look, having having fun toys. That's cool. Yeah. But it definitely was not, um, you know, so, I don't know. 